Hey, what's good, family? Todd M. here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thanks for stopping by. And if you find any of this information useful, please don't forget to like or subscribe. It really helps me out and it doesn't cost you a thing. Now, without any further ado, let's get into it. So this video is going to be talking about how to integrate your iPad into your DAW workflow, specifically Logic. Now, I've done a few videos about this topic before, but I decided to do a new one because one, I see this question popping up all the time, and two, there's been a few software updates. Things have gotten a little better. So I think the subject matter deserves a reboot. And I'm going to break this tutorial up into three sections. So feel free to skip ahead to the ones that interest you. Chapter one, we'll be talking about getting audio from your iPad apps into your DAW. Chapter two addresses synchronization. And finally, chapter three talks about using your iPad as an effects processor. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to Spotlight and open the audio MIDI preferences. Now make sure the audio devices window is shown. And now will be a great time to connect your iPad using a standard lightning bolt cable. And once that's done, you'll see your iPad icon pop up under the device list. Now you wanna click enable so that your computer recognizes the iPad as an audio device. Now from here, we're gonna create what they call an, aggreg an, aggre an aggregate device. And it's way simpler than it sounds. All it means is that the computer is going to take multiple devices and look at them as one. So now you're gonna to wanna to click on the little plus icon at the bottom to create a new aggregate device. Now your screen may look slightly different than mine, but you're gonna to want to include your main audio interface, mine happens to be the focus right, and your iPad. And as you can see, your newly created aggregate device contains all the inputs from your main interface in green and the iPad, which is in pink. Now make note that my iPad shows up on inputs 29 and 30, but yours may be slightly different. Now one more step in this process is to give your aggregate device a name that makes sense. Now you can close this window and launch Logic. Once in Logic, open up audio preferences. Now under the input and output device drop downs, you'll see the new aggregate iPad device that we just created. Choose that for both and then click apply. You can close this window now, then create a new session. The next step is to create a new instrument track using Logic's external instrument which can be found under the utility menu. So in this next step, we're gonna be telling Logic to send MIDI data out to the iPad while receiving audio from the iPad on inputs 29 and 30, which corresponds to our new aggregate device. Also remember that yours may be slightly different depending on your interface. Now in this example, I'm gonna be using Animoog, which is always a lot of fun to mess with. Now if you don't have Animoog, don't despair, because most iPad audio apps are pretty much set up the same way. You wanna to go to your settings page, select the MIDI section, and then choose iDAM, which stands for Enter Device Audio MIDI, or something to that effect. Select that for the input and output. Now that's pretty much it for the setup. Now you can go back to Logic on your external instrument track, play a few notes, and you should hear your iPad app playing. Now don't forget to record the audio from your iPad to an audio track in Logic. You won't be able to do an offline bounce. 
Now, if you're not sure how to do this, then just drop me a note in the comment section below, and I'll try to put together a quick video to demonstrate this. So in this next section, I'm gonna talk about synchronization. So why is sync important? If you have a time-based app, such as a drum machine, you're gonna want that app to follow the tempo and the play and stop commands coming from your DAW. So in this example, I'm gonna be using this really amazing iPad app called Drum Computer made by Sugarbytes. So Sugarbytes makes a desktop plugin version of Drum Computer that's about three or four times the cost of the iPad app. So I can save a couple of coins, invest that in Ethereum, and just use the app that's already on my iPad. So you're gonna to wanna to set up an instrument track going to your iPad in the exact same manner described in section one. So as you can see, as I start the loop from drum computer, then hit play and stop in logic, you'll notice that drum computer carries on about its business with no respect or regard for what's going on with the dog. To fix that, we're gonna to wanna to send sync information or time code over to the iPad. Under File, Project Settings, find the Synchronization tab. Select MIDI, find your iPad under Destination, then click the clock checkbox. So back over to the iPad. So whatever app you're using, you're gonna to wanna to navigate to the MIDI settings and make sure that IDAM and MIDI clock sync are both active. Now, as you can see, Logic is now in complete control of drum computers, tempo and play and stop status. Here you can see, as I change the tempo in real time in Logic, drum computer follows along obediently. So in this next section, I'm gonna be talking about using the iPad as an effects rack. Now I say this part for last, not that it's super complicated or anything, but it is somewhat of an intermediate level process. And furthermore, you're gonna to have to spend a little coin to get this app called Studio Mux to get this to work. Now Studio Mux is a $9 app, so go ahead and get that installed if you wanna give this a shot. You'll need to install the Studio Mux iPad app, of course, the Studio Mux server, and the Studio Mux plugin. And all this how-to info can be found at zerodebug.com. Now, this app has been recently updated. The user interface and stability have been greatly improved. Now, the old version, to be honest, kind of sucked. So I had pretty much given up using it. But the new version, is far <laughs> superior. <laughs> so once everything is installed, what you wanna do is on an instrument or audio track, you want to set up a bus. We'll use bus one in this example and then install an instrument. Now on your bus track that you just created, you're going to want to insert the Studio Mux plugin, which can be found under Zero Debug. Now you want to make sure that the Studio Mux app is running on the iPad. Now back in Logic, you want to set the Studio Mux plugin to communicate with the iPad as such on channel one. 
Now, once your iPad has established a connection, you will see these little icons pop up for the input and the output. Now, in this example, I'm gonna be using the Black Hole plugin by Eventide, which is one of my favorite reverbs for cinematic stuff. Now, I actually have the hardware version of the Black Hole Reverb, which lives inside of my $2,000 Eventide Eclipse. But I moved that unit to another studio, so I don't always have access to it when I'm working from home. So the next best thing is the $9 plugin that lives on my iPad. Now there's a more convenient version that runs on the desktop, but that costs about $200. And I'll just save that money invested in Ethereum. So in the effects section, we are going to grab the black hole plugin and insert it on channel one. If you don't have black hole, use whatever effects that you own. Now back in Logic, you want to increase the level sending to the bus. Here, you're hearing the signal being processed by the black hole plugin on the iPad, then returned to Logic. So remember, you can set up multiple sends and also multiple effects chains only limited by your imagination. Todd M here. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Don't forget to like or subscribe. Until next time, if you don't know, now you know.